Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. Today we're starting a new show, a new thread in season 27, close to the end of season 27, where we're going to work with Sila and her mom Susie in pairs. We're going to put on this double yoke, which we have made here at Shadrach Farms. And I have some videos back in season 23, I think, that shows you how we made it from um, local hardware materials, PVC and and conduit, bending it with uh, a torch and uh, uh, trying it on and teaching the girls when Sila was probably uh, at least a, a year younger, uh, teaching them to move together with this double yoke. I did want to buy a wooden double yoke. Uh, can you see this, uh, Scott? Yeah. But it was very expensive. I wasn't sure how much double yoke work I was going to do. So I said, okay, I love my wooden double yoke, which I had to order from the East Coast and had it sent out here. But we made this useful, not pretty, but useful double yoke right here and did a whole lot of training. Now we've got two saddle racks set up here with our uh, harnesses. And we use long dog leashes connected to each other to, um, to have drive lines. Uh, we trained these two zebus, um, mother and daughter, to uh, drive with each a, a pair of drive lines on their halters, as you see the halters on their heads right now. We didn't have to use any kind of nose ring or anything more severe than just halters. We walked up and down this driveway pulling all kinds of things when they were pulling in pairs, including uh, a stone boat with uh, some weight on it and we we walked around can you turn your camera scott um the debris and the obstacles here in our obstacles area and they were great about pulling the items we asked them to pull in pairs and not only on turf not only on the sanded driveway but in the uh, natural ground debris of our obstacles area we felt so good with our progress. We moved on to other things. We started working with Sela individually, but I think it's time to go back to pairs work. And one of the motivating factors in me making this decision uh, today in May 2012 is just a couple weeks ago on RFD TV, there was a special RFD program on rural heritage where a gentleman trained his two steer to uh, pull a wagon with drive lines. And he did it by uh, small steps, uh, teaching them to G, ha, stop, back. And then he called it put in and put out. Uh, that was hips in and hips out. And uh, the steer allowed him to uh, direct their motion uh, from behind. And he actually pulls a wagon when there's crowds around. And that was challenging for him. It was interesting to me that he used a nose ring that wasn't attached in the nose. He j it was just like a clip, and he put it on each steer's nose, and that was the way he controlled them. I prefer not to do it that way. I'm hoping we'll be able to do everything we want to do with just these halters on. And then the only other thing we want to do today, because it's been so long, is put on the double yokes. Not move with it, just put them on. And I'm trying to remember how we did it. Here is a carriage bolt with a wing nut. And uh, I'm just re recollecting here, kind of as we're videoing this introduction, showing you what we do. Okay, and I dropped the wing nut. Got to make sure we pick up all this hardware so it's not accidentally eaten. Okay, in my pocket it goes. Then this uh, bow comes out. And the uh, straight bar goes under their necks. Okay, let me do the same thing to the other bow. It got so that uh, in season 23 that when we wanted to 
harness them up and put this double yoke on. It was no big deal. Katie did it all by herself and she just called me out when they were ready to go and we tried the next challenging thing. So again, the wing knot on the left side here, putting that in my pocket. I don't know, we might figure something else out besides wing nuts so we don't have to open and close them like I just did. But back then it worked. Okay, here come the bows out. It's all right. Thanks, now this girl. is Sela. Good. This is good Susie's job, heifer daughter. Okay, good girl. Good girl. And this is Susie. You want to put it on? Mm -hmm. Very carefully. They seem okay. As a matter of fact, Sela's chewing her cut. <laughs> and now I'm. Oh. It's all right. It's all right, darling. It's all right. A little bit scary. Let's let them investigate. Yeah, she's smelling it. Soon it won't be scary at all. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. Let's uh, put this lead line over Susie's head so it doesn't get hung up. Okay. Trying not to put any pressure on their nose. You hold this end of the bottom of the double yoke. See if I can get Sela to step up just a bit. Step up. Step up. Step up. Okay, can you get it? Can you hold it? Mm -hmm. Hold it because I need to get our arm extension. We always have them wherever we're working. We always have arm extensions available when we're working with livestock. And used in the right place at the right time, they're tremendous. Step up. Step up. There you go. Good. <laughs> Just ever so slight a tap. Okay. It's all right. I uh, wanted to step up a little bit. See, we're going to have to fine tune. Step up. Step up behind the drive line. Ah, 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 ah. A little bit of a misunderstanding. Come on. Step up. Good. Very nice. Very nice, darling. I'm going to just drop it here in case I need it again. We're going to put the, without the wing nut, we're going to put the yoke in. Can you do it on your side without pulling on their lead lines? Because we don't want to give them the wrong message. Now Susie's chewing her cud. Okay. And then we're not going to move today. We're just letting them get used to it again. They're connected now. They're both relaxed. They're chewing their cuts. They're standing still. That's all I wanted to do today, to show you what we're going to do in tiny baby steps the next time and the time after that and get to the point where I'm hoping out of an old hay cart we're going to build a small wagon that uh, one of us can get into the wagon and drive these two heifers from behind. Now, do we want to use cross-check reins? Angela, think about that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we did it with two pair of single reins when we did it years ago or one year ago. Let's drop it out now. And I did buy cross-check reins for my horses, but I think maybe we'll try it with the single uh, pair, two pairs of single reins first. Look how, yeah. Can, can you get her back up, or should I pick up my arm extension? Say, step, step up. You want step up? Step up. A little bit more pressure. Step up. Good. Pressure. Step up. Good. A little bit more pressure. Timing, position, and pressure. That's how we're gonna help these two girls, these two heifers, understand what is the right answer. Our next session with Susie and Sela. We already put the double yoke on. We're going to try to get that to be a routine thing um, where they just, you know, don't get concerned about who's on their knees next to them or what's going over their head. And it turned out pretty good today. Uh, remember, the double yoke is connecting them. So if one or the other or both gets spooked, they could uh, hurt themselves or break the tack whatever. In the past, I have had a, a glued connection fall apart on this double yoke, which we fixed, and that was no big thing. Um, and a couple of times, 
their hips separated, so they were almost facing each other, which with horses can be very, very dangerous. With these little mini zebus, we were able to, with arm extensions, get their hips back together, and they didn't spook, and we didn't have a wreck. Now, uh, in a couple days, when we have a proper team here, we're going to put um, two pair of single, two pair of drive lines, uh, one pair on Susie, one pair on Sela. We're going to have uh, one driver or two drivers asking them to go down this driveway. This is a uh, part of my driveway that's covered with sand, and it's here in my obstacles area. Now, if that goes well, after we've practiced a little bit, because we did it about a year ago and they were getting really good at it, driving them be from behind, uh, at first we're going to have somebody as well at the heads, you see, and that's why I need at least uh, a five-member team uh, <coughs> and somebody to, you know, the fifth member to run the camera and be there in case of trouble. But look how we laid out. I'm going to slowly walk away because I don't want them to move. Just a point. That's, that's girl. Good girls. They tend to join up just like horses do. We have created crest check lines for the Zebus that are similar in design to the cross check lines that I bought in Biothane from Doc Hamill for our horses. Now, what is a cross check line? What's the principle? Let me show you. We have one pair of drive lines controlling the, the two animals. But in the front, we have control lines going to each side of each animal's halter or bridle or whatever we're using. So that when you want to do something with the left side of the pair, this being the left, you see that with this Y, we have pressure on the left side of their head control device uh, of the left animal. And with this other end of the Y, pressure on the left side of the animal on the right side of the pair. Similarly, if you want to have right control, you use one single rein here in the back or drive line. And here at the Y, you've got right control of the right animal. And here at the Y, you've got right control of the left animal. And in between, these lines cross over each other, and we have a ring through which they cross over. And this ring always has to be here in this direction, and we'll emphasize that when we actually use it. If you want to see us doing this very thing with our Morgan horses, any video that I have on Urban Cowgirl Channel called Pairs Driving, will uh, show you what we do to prepare them for pairs driving. And if you go over the titles, you'll see where we say with cross-check lines. It took us a long time to get to the point where we understood the cross-check lines. I had to special order them from Doc Hamill. Um, and we're still uh, in the process of trying to be comfortable with my Morgan horses in pairs, being comfortable with uh, one driver behind them and the driver being comfortable with control of two horses in front with just one pair of drive lines in the hands of the driver. So um, this is what we've des designed for the cows. Can you look over at the cows again? The, do the double yoke that we built here at Shadrach Farms, have videos about that. The uh, individual drive lines, which you can make out of dog leashes for animals this size or um, lead lines for horses, whatever, just so long as they're long enough to get behind the animals and that the driver doesn't have to trip over anything that they happen to be pulling. And then ultimately, the finesse of cross-check drive lines for miniature zebus, Susie and Sela here at Chadrack Farms. Keep in tune with the Urban Cowgirl Channel and you'll see our progress every step of the way. Cross check reins, pairs driving with my mini Zebu heifers, Susie and Sela. 
We're going to walk towards the camera. We're going to stop. We're going to let my cameraman zoom in to how we're using dog leashes to make cross-check reins. And then Katie, who already did some driving with Angela's help, before we turn the camera on, is going to tell you um, what we think needs to be worked on. And then we hope we're going to show you some driving with these two heifers with one pair of reins that are controlling the heads, the right and left side of the heads of each heifer uh, with cross check reins. So Katie, you tell them what to do. And Angela and I are just here because we're at the beginning of this training. We want to make sure we have head control. Step up. Katie. Ready, ho. Okay, can you zoom in, Scott, on the cross check reins? We've already showed you how the double yoke works. The cross check reins has one rein here, one dog leash here, one dog leash here. Same with Sela. They cross in the middle with a ring, and, um, and then they come together to one pair of reins in Katie's hands. That's what you do with horses. We're doing it with our cows too, to teach them to, to move in pairs. And Katie, can you tell us what you observed so far? Um, we already went down the driveway a little bit and did a haw turn. Susie walks a lot slower than Sela. Um, and when they get, if one of them gets too far ahead, they kind of pull on each, other, on each other's heads through the cross track range. So they just need more practice to learn to stay right on head on head. And look at some of my past shows on how we're teaching pairs driving to even her daughter Sadie, my Morgan mares, because we're, we're spending a lot of time trying to get those two horses to understand that they not, not only need to go parallel, they need to go at the same speed. They need to choose to, to move head on head because if they're pulling, if they're farming, they've got to work together. Same speed, same direction. And when you stop, one of the consistent problems that we've had, but we're getting better at it, we're working on it, is one or the other will move their hips away from each other, which can be a very dangerous maneuver in pairs driving and farming. And so it could lead to a wreck. And we do anything we possibly can to avoid wrecks. OK, so now, Katie, let's go down the driveway, do the hot turn, just like you did before we turn on the camera, and come back. OK, step up. Step up, Paul. Step up, Paul. Step up, Paul. This is where you hide? Okay. Step up, Paul. Good girls. Step up. Remember, ha means left, G means right. We've got loose lines here, but we're here just in case there's trouble. Can we G when we come out this way? Step up. Step up. Step Let's up go. G. Can we go all the way around this uh, L? Step up. Susie, step up. Step up. We go around this tree. Step up. Step up, girls. We just went over some stumps. I was wondering Step how up. they deal with that. You know, when you're farming and logging, you Step up. very often might have to deal with uneven ground. Step up, G. Now we're going to stop in front of the camera, let them up. think about it for a few seconds, and then ask for a back. Keep in mind that the hips might separate, so. Back. Back. Visual. Back. Watch that, that hip, yeah. A little more. Over. Back. 
Good girls. Can we go up a few steps? Step Call up. Call out our moment of resolution. Girls, step up. Loose line. I'm letting Katie do the requesting. Step up. Steady. Who? Oh. Good girls. They're parallel. They're head on head. We didn't have any indication of possible wrecks. We're awfully happy with this session. They both get an A plus, and thank you, team. Our next session with Sela and her mom, Susie. Uh, unfortunately, we need at least one, if not two other people to help us today to do this most safely. Oh, we're, so we may not move, but at least we're going to plan for the next session, which we will make sure we have more helpers and be able to move. Each one of us has an arm extension. We've got the cross-check reins hooked up like we did in our last session when we did move. We've got the double yoke on uh, that uh, we moved with last time. This was a homemade double yoke. Today, here's the extra added tool installment. But I'm going to be real careful since there's only three of us. It's all right, girls. They have great peripheral vision. It's all right, girls. It's all right, girls. May, I'm trying not to make a lot of noise back here because that might concern them. Angela, can you hold, without applying pressure, hold these two chains? Okay. We're making noise, so we're doing it real quietly. Look at their ears. They're hearing the noise. We're bringing up the single trees. In a moment, I'm going to make sure the camera can see all of this. We've got tug straps on. In one case, a pair of chains. In another case, a pair of nylon straps. Two single trees, one for each heifer, and then a single tree. Can you hold? Yeah. A single tree that holds those two single trees together. These are all tools that we've used in the past but never with cross-check reins. There you go. Those, the single trees are right behind Angela's feet. The heifers are standing good. We're going to talk about how we would hook up the tug straps and the tug chains if we had en enough people here today. Uh, because even hooking them up can be spooky. So. We're just going to talk about how we're going to do it next time. And I'm going to, uh, I just made sure that the camera was correctly on the scene. For now, I'm going to put my arm extension down. It's all right, girls. Notice how everything is done very quietly and always let them know that you're there, wherever, on the sides of their body, behind their body. It's all right, girls. Okay. It's all right, girls. I'll do it only with the near ones here. Here are the chains that we've used for individual pulling. What we would do, if we had enough help today, is go through the bottom rank of the sur singles of each heifer. Can you hold this? I'll just show you on camera side. It's all right, girls. It's all right. Now, this is Sela, the youngster. It's all right. It's all right. You go, see, once you're through a ring, you're already committed. So you have to be really, really careful. And then we go to this clasp on the yoke, the double yoke. And if we were actually going to do some pulling, we would make sure we'd have our britchin on and our croupers so that we can keep the chain up off the ground back here. So here's how we're going to actually do our work here. With all of this tack, with the britchin and the crouper, with the tug cha uh, chains and the tug straps, with the single trees that we've made out of PVC. And I'm just going to put this down for now quietly. Good girl. And the first time that we move, we won't attach anything to these single trees. 
we will just hold it up off the ground. I'm going to put it down again and make sure we're in camera's view. We'll use that chain at the very back, the back single tree, so that we can hold it up off the ground when we're training. Then when we're sure that the heifers are not being spooked, we let it down. But let me show you what I mean by letting it down. It's going to make a lot of noise rubbing on this rock sanded driveway. So the first time we move, okay, you guys, I'm going to pick it up. It's going to make a little noise. It'll be up off the ground. So they'll feel the pull. They won't hear the sound. If all goes well, we're just going to put it down on the ground. It's all right, girls. They even hear that. But hold it here with this handle chain so we can pick it up again if we have to. We're going to have one person at each head as well as one person driving the cross-check reins. And all of this is because these are prey animals. If they hear something, feel something, are not sure about something, they're little, but they also very well might bolt. And you know, they're connected to each other. They're mother and daughter, but one prey animal, whether it be a mother and a daughter, pair or not, can spook the other prey animal. So we've got a plan, and this will be in season 28 of the Urban Cowgirl Channel. We've got a plan to continue to train Sela, which is closest to the camera, and her mom Susie, which is farthest from the camera, to pull implements and pull logs, not only in straight step up paths like down the driveway, but in the G and Ha directions around our obstacles here on the natural ground, which has some storm debris, has some leaves, has obstacles here and there and everywhere. We're going to ask them to do some work around here as a pair with the cross check reins. And what's great about the cross check reins, one pair of reins uh, is in the handler's hand. But each pair, but the pair of reins is controlling both the right and left side of the heifer's heads. And right now all we have on them is a, uh, our web halters. And that, uh, as of our last session where we did move with them, that seemed to be enough. Uh, if we need more, like uh, side pulls, uh, which we've used in the past with our heifers, we'll do that too. And that's all for today. We've shown you our plan for the rest of this year. See more at www.urbancowgirlchannel.com.